Warning, this show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. The show was produced by Geek Happy Network, creators of the very best in audible Oracle entertainment. In other words, podcasts. If you enjoy listening to The Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts. This, this is Smorgasbord! Okay. Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. Mm. I'm Mick. And I'm Angel. And we're today we're here to talk about poop? Poop? Mm. Poop coffee? Poops, poop stories. Okay, My favorite stories. I think this is Angel's idea. So why, why, why are we doing poop? <laughs> We're specifically talking about poop coffee. Oh, poop coffee. Is it like, why you poop? I don't mean... When you drink coffee? Coffee poop. I mean poop coffee. Poop coffee. <laughs> like, oh, like coffee that is poop? Yes, precisely. Wow, this is special. So okay. all you uh, Starbucks lovers, <laughs> you won't be getting the special coffee. <laughs> no, apparently not. I guess Starbucks is too fancy for this. Or too plain. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Not hipster enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so today we're going to talk about poop coffee, or I guess to some places it's called civet coffee. Yes. So it's not actually people pooping coffee. No. It's, an it's animal called, pooping coffee? Sometimes it's called cat poop coffee. Cat poop coffee. But the animals that actually consume these beans, the cocoa beans, the, is that what? Coffee, coffee beans. Coffee yeah. beans. <laughs> They're not actually cats. They no. are very weasel-like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So today we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll go through the history of coffee and then talk and then look into what really is this poop coffee and how it came to be. It's very expensive. Yeah, it is very expensive. Um, so yeah. So for those of you who don't know, did you know that there are full-time jobs dedicated to preparing and serving coffee? <laughs> you mean a barista? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Called baristas. That's crazy. Oh, man. Never heard of such a profession. Yeah. You have a bartender and then you have a barista. barista. Huh. Uh huh. Never heard of it. No. No. Especially where us. Where do you get your coffee art from? Art majors have never heard of being a barista. <laughs> yeah. Where do you get your coffee from? I don't know. It's I get like my a magic bird. <laughs> Just. Yeah. drops it in it, your hand as you go outside poops a cup down into my hand every morning Aww. makes like a caca <laughs> <laughs> wow I don't have that kind of service yeah. I kind of have to go to a barista ah, okay. to receive coffee oh good to know good to know yeah 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 <laughs> so what is actually well coffee is the result of brewing roasted ground coffee beans for those people who don't know um it's just bean water yeah essentially it is just bean water it, it comes from just and they're not actually really we call them coffee beans but really they're like seeds in some way um they come from the pits of a coffee tree it's the fruit so you get the fruit you get i think i don't know i don't know if it's still the definition but fruit versus vegetable oh. fruits the one that and has legumes seeds. yeah so and nuts yeah, so a coffee tree has cherries, mm-hmm. and then the coffee cherry has pits. Pits, and that's where you call it. We call it coffee beans, I guess, because coffee pits sound weird. Gross. I guess, <laughs> yeah, it sounds gross. Yeah, let me get some pit water. <laughs> <laughs> Put some extra dark pit in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, so um, the coffee tree or coffea is a, it's an evergreen tree, but it's also kind of small, and I think some people even say it's a shrub. I don't know. I don't scientist. know the classification of trees yeah. and shrubs or but bushes or yeah. I don't know stuff. We're no <laughs> we're no scientists. We just we just Google stuff and then <laughs> tell us we're a podcast. We Google yes. stuff and <laughs> tell people it in word form instead of written form. <laughs> <laughs> this is going great. Awesome. <laughs> um, it grows in tropical climate regions. Um, when you plant a coffee seed, it takes about two and a half to six months for it to germinate into a plant so germinate is like when it becomes a little stalk of plant 
plant good plantiness. I mean, we yeah we planted stuff in like grade school. Yeah, exactly. We try to grow onions out of onions. Oh yeah, and then we grew some beans. Yeah, never tried a coffee bean, but I'm pretty Ooh. sure it wouldn't work because it's been roasted. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, actually, that would probably be the main reason. I was gonna say it's because we're, we don't live in the tropics, but <laughs> yeah, the roasted part kind of trumps that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like twenty kinds of dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So once it germinates, it's another three to four years for it to produce fruit, and then you could harvest the fruit for coffee. The plants produce. Or sorry, the plants and when the fruiting process or whatever <laughs> is that the leaves <laughs> the eventually become flowers. The flowers then turn into cherries over the period of 30 to 35 weeks. Um, for many countries, coffee is still being harvested by hand. Um, so you can imagine how much work that involves, like picking coffee the bean. cherry off the tree. Yeah. There's something dirty about that. I don't know. <laughs> and people use a cherry for something. Like Pie? dirty jokes. Oh, yeah. Like they took my cherry. Is that how? I don't know. Papa cherry. Papa cherry. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's um, a different topic for a different day. Yeah, that's day. a different, <laughs> a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so when you grab, picking involves usually yeah. What was, as we mentioned, picking usually is done still by hand in some of the con- in most countries. Finding the ripe cherry is a whole skill in itself because there's a big difference between grabbing a ripe cherry and a n- not so ripe cherry. Um, Usually, the old school way of picking the cherries are they pick it by hand. There's another way where you kind of selectively pick it rather than... Or, sorry. So, you selectively... You could selectively pick the cherries from the tree. Or you could just grab them by the bunch and process it after. Mm. Um, obviously, that way, if you grab it by the bunch, then the ones that aren't so ripe yet won't ripen anymore, I think. You but can't you just put it in a bag like a banana? No, you can't just pick that. Um, but if you do that, the it's, I think it's called the wet process. If you just strip it all and put it on water, um, the sinking cherries are the ripe cherries. So a sunk cherry is a ready cherry. Uh, patten, patented <laughs> Mick by Mick, uh, 2019. <laughs> well, well the, the podcasting doesn't work. Yeah. You can go... You know, come up with titles lines. for yeah. porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we have tagged lines for like a porn. coffee oh. farm <laughs> in Tanz- I don't know where they grow coffee. Brazil? Brazil, sure. Yeah. Warm places. Yeah. A ripe cherry is a sunk cherry. <laughs> a sunk cherry is a ready cherry. That's what it was. Well, that sounds. Something like that. that still sounds dirty. I don't know. Yeah, it sounds so bad. Maybe we shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay, I'm not patenting it. Y'all could have it. Maybe um. you should get the <laughs> domain name too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a sunk cherry is a ready cherry dot com. That's mm-hmm. where we sell the best coffee out there. Oh yeah. We got all the sunk cherries. We sunk everybody's cherry. <laughs> <laughs> all the floaties? Oh, we get yeah. rid of those. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thorough screening process here. Yeah, we gotta we gotta we gotta do right by the law. Man, this uh, this this episode's going really well. <laughs> <laughs> There's very little about actual coffee happening yeah. right now. <laughs> that might be because I haven't actually had a coffee today. Oh, me too, actually. Because mm-hmm. I woke up super late today. Should fix that after. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was prepping for a film, and I'm like, could be up by seven. All right. Like, Ten o'clock rolls down. My brother's like, "Hey, are you gonna drive me somewhere?" I'm like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> it's not seven. <laughs> it's not seven. Yes, a coffee cherry. So the coffee cherry then is a coffee. So the coffee bean is covered by a full by a. Co- oh my god, the <laughs> coffee bean. I really need my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee bean is cer- is covered, or inside a coffee cherry is a coffee bean. Um, but extracting that bean out is actually a lot more complicated process than a lot of people might think. You don't just pick the bean, find a ripe cherry, and then I don't know, eat the co- eat the cherry and spit it out spit it out it's a little bit more tricky because a coffee bean surrounded by multiple different layers as well so trying to get through all those layers is also another tricky process and once you get through that layer you might you have to do it quickly so you don't um spoil the number of cherries you get and you can see from everyone who knows how much a bag of coffee beans are that's a lot of cherries you have to kind of go through Mm -hmm. so yeah 
it's not that easy to make coffee essentially is what we're trying to get at here there's a lot of processes i don't want to get too deep into it because i'm excited to talk about poop Um, (laughs) so we'll talk a little bit more about different types of coffee once we have the beans now so the, the harvesting process already takes a lot of time so let's look more into the other stuff but before that apparently coffee we go around the world every day we eat consume almost over two billion cups of coffee a day Ooh, um, about a, a third of that is me yeah probably <laughs> that's a lot of co- that's almost a billion cups just for one person mm, delicious <laughs> i don't know how i'm still alive yeah <laughs> two-thirds of americans drink a cup of coffee every day um which apparently totals to about 18.5 gallons per person a year <laughs> crap but Apparently in Finland, they drink three times that average. Oh, wow. So imagine drinking almost 60 gallons of coffee a year. I don't Mm -hmm. know. It's not surprising. I drink like probably a (laughs) gallon a day. (laughs) This is how we survive the film industry. (laughs) Pretty much. So what is coffee like for those one third of the world that doesn't drink coffee? You should try it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Coffee is a beverage with a variable percentage of caffeine and a very specific aroma and taste. Most people who first try coffee don't like it. That's why they tend to cover it up with sugar sugar and milk. We talked about it a few weeks ago in the portion sizes episode, which I think is already out. For those who haven't listened to it yet, give it a listen. But we talked in portion sizes. Part of that, we talked about how Serving sizes are getting bigger, but also one thing that came up was that in coffee today, the calorie intake is much higher than before. And we were saying a big part of it was because more and more people put sugar and milk in their coffee. Sometimes if you want to get fancy, you put ice cream. Ice cream, yeah. (laughs) Frap it up. Yeah. Frap it with a bean. Java frap. (laughs) That's my my frappuccino is the Java chip. Mm. Yeah. I want to be some kind of a minty one. Ooh, they do have a mint frappuccino in Starbucks. I'm not a right? I'm not a Starbucks person, yeah. even though I live right on top of one. <laughs> I feel like half of Vancouver lives right on top of yeah, Starbucks. Yeah, there's a there's another one just a block away. Yeah. <laughs> like, is this necessary? <laughs> Jeez, yeah, I'm not a fan of the coffee in Starbucks either. Uh, um, yeah, but the aroma and taste of different coffees do vary based on how you extract it, based on the type of coffee bean it is, the quality of the coffee bean, the concentration in the end, the type of roasting you do. So again, just like the harvesting, there are a lot of things that come when it, a lot of factors that are involved in making coffee um, turn into the right bean. The most common types of coffee are the Arabica and the Robusta beans. Arabica does take up 80% of the total coffee production, while Robustas are about 20%. The other less popular varieties could involve Liberica, which I'm assuming is from Liberia. Cameroonian, which is I'm assuming is from Cameroon. What gave that away? I don't know. <laughs> Congo, which I'm assuming is from France. Mm. No, it's Belgium. Probably, it's probably from Congo. It's, you know, when Belgium was what? a bad colonist. Oh, was Belgium what invaded Congo? Mm-hmm. Oh, good that was know. a rather bloody Yeesh. and terrifying story. Isn't it all? Um. Sierra Leonean coffee and Bengal coffee. And there are other types of coffee there, of course, as well. But Arabica and Robusta are the most popular ones. So when you hear Arabica coffee, it's the type of coffee bean, I guess. Um, it, the difference between Arabica and Robusta is Arabica tends to be more acidic, which I'm assuming is a star- Starbucks uses Arabica because, Jesus, are their coffees so acidic. <laughs> and Robusta has more flavor, which I'm assuming Starbucks doesn't use because Starbucks coffee has no flavor. No, it's just... Fight me on that. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm talking to, the list, to, our, to our, like, one listener. <laughs> so. Well, uh, hey, Colin listens to this, and he would agree. Mm. Starbucks. Yeah. Mm, it's yeah. more... Starbucks is more of a gateway coffee place. It is. Like, if you want to start drinking coffee, you're like, where do I go? Yeah. Starbucks, it's right there. It's and true. there's another one right down the street. That's true. It's a good gateway because for- it forces you to drink it with sugar and milk because there's mm. no way you could enjoy a Starbucks coffee black. Yeah, I, I started like with a black, yeah, a Pike Place roast, Ooh. and it was so, it was too much for a beginner. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. I did espressos in college, because I used yeah. to believe that espressos had more um, caffeine mm. than does it not regular coffee. No, okay. I think it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Actually, no, it doesn't. Um, robust. So yeah, like we said, robusta is a little bit more flavorful, more bitterness. So. 
French and Italian coffee preparation usually uses robusta. It also contains more caffeine. Mm. Now, moving, as you mentioned, as we were talking about, like, there are different types of coffee brews out there as well. Espresso being one of them. That's when you use steam through the coffee grinds using pressure to create the coffee. It has the greatest amount of extraction of aromatic oils from the coffee bean, but it doesn't contain as much co- caffeine as other methods. So, again, just like the creation of a coffee bean, the way you actually extract the coffee from the bean... Makes so many different ways too. Yeah. So coffee is so freaking complicated. It, makes it is. I didn't know what a cappuccino was. I didn't yeah. know what a macchiato was. I'm right? just like, I will order whatever that guy's ordering. Yeah. To me, it's like all the same, but actually it does a lot of different things. So as we showed here, um, even looking through an espresso, they're talking about oils. They're talking about flavor and caffeine. So the way you extract your coffee will change all of that as well. There's more caffeine in drip coffee when you extract it compared to, say, espresso and all the other kinds. But it is much more clear, which means there's less aromas and flavors that get extracted from the bean. Bean water. Yeah, because I think, yeah, because you kind of grind, I think it's the way you grind it and all of that. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know. Cold brew is a type of coffee that uses cold infusion on the coffee grinds. It has more flavors, less acidity, and less caffeine. I'm a fan. Yeah, cold brew is good. It is. It Actually, has a natural sweetness. That would that be the out. one thing I like from Starbucks. Their nitro cold brew. cold brew. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, because it is less acidic. And it's just, I think Starbucks coffee tastes better when it's less at- acidic. <laughs> when it doesn't taste like Starbucks. Yeah, great. French press uses a metal filter instead of a paper filter that will filter less of the arrow. It will filter less of the aromatic oils, so appreciated by coffee snobs. Um, and then there's the Vietnamese style, which is similar Ooh, to the French yeah. press. Um, the coffee is drawn milk. very fine. A lot of the aromas are kept. And yes, they put so much of the condensed milk. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, what so is your preferred coffee brew and style? What uh, is your coffee? It used to be preference? drip black. But right. since I've been to Europe this summer, <laughs> it's changed a little. Because wow. their espressos are... A plus. <laughs> right. Oh, you're one of those people. And I was like, yeah. oh, now that I've been to Europe. <laughs> it's I, true. I just drink espressos now. I had um something called a noisette in what Paris. The heck? And it comes in a small cup. You know what? I don't even know what it is. I just ordered it one day. I'm like, <laughs> I need caffeine. Please give me whatever this is. And it came in a little shot glass. Wow. Um, Very hot. So, you know, my shot glass is not ideal to no, lift. Yeah. <laughs> but... You just have to it get was, it over with. It was delicious. Nice. <laughs> I just Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is a noise? Noisette. Noisette. Mm-hmm. So it's black coffee served with milk froth in a short cup. Okay. It was quite concentrated. It was really strong. So it's like a super, it's a more cappuccino cappuccino. Yes. Sort of. Oh, no, but, they, but it's, in it's small, just it's froth. In they don't put milk dough. at all. No, there's oh, no okay. milk in it. Oh, cool. Yeah, and it was served with a little chocolate on the side. Just oh, to, you know, yeah. in case it's a little bit too bitter. Right. That sounds delicious. It was great. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I prefer the affogados, but I think I still drink mine even after Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Give me drip coffee black. Drip coffee black. That's it. I'm a simple person. I Although cold brew is good. Cold brew is great. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like sugar in my coffee. I mm. like it better like my soul. Yeah. Um, yesterday at Jamie's house, I had it with soy milk, Ooh. which I usually stay away from because I don't know. I'm <laughs> like, that's not milk. It's nut juice. Yeah. So I put some nut juice in my bean juice and it was actually quite good. Yeah. <laughs> you went from popping cherries to nut juice. That's great. Mm, love it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's a bunch of different ways you could roast your coffee as well from light all the way to double roast. So there's a light, medium, full and double roast. Roasting changes the chemical properties of the beans, so they have different tastes and aromas. Um, if you don't even roast it, apparently it's pretty bland in flavor. I haven't tried it, so I wouldn't know actually for sure. Um, but they're, they're, the varying degrees do change the tastes and flavors. The more you roast the beans, the less of the original flavor remains, which maybe is a good thing if the original flavor is bland. Mm-hmm. The um, original flavor is no flavor? Yeah. It's like when you go to America and get just plain chicken. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? 
You put roast honey that on shit. It. Put like, some put some spices. Oh, you stuff. mean like where they just boil their chicken? Yeah, <laughs> like people. Where are like, I just do you have this roast boiled chicken? I'm thinking, okay, that's healthy, but is it really healthy <laughs> for your soul? <laughs> At what cost? Because <laughs> you don't look that happy. <laughs> you look good, no, but you don't I feel good. I believe in good. chicken fried. Yes, fried chicken. Um. So, yeah, so the bitterness comes from the roast. So the more roasted it is, the more bitter it is. I like mine as roasted and dark as possible. Uh, me too. I like some flavor. I really don't like acidity, acidic coffee, so I don't know. I forgot to research into that, but I don't know what it makes. what makes it acidic, but the less of that, the better for me. Well, I mean, I'm sure we've all had coffee poops. That's yeah. from the high acidity. Yeah. Just right? makes your stomach exactly. go, oh, oh, time to go. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of, there are a bunch of different benefits and non-benefits to drinking coffee. I'd like to just think that the non-benefits are non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the main part in terms of health for coffee is caffeine. Mm-mm. Right. Uh, so a lot of people who drink coffee probably drink it for the caffeine. Um, coffee does contain a lot of antioxidants as well, um, but the caffeine is the one that gives you that little pick me up of sorts. There is some addiction to coffee, as we could see. There's already the had some. Oh, what is that? Oh, Whoever's out there needs some in coffee. Our room studio. Is that a cat? It is so weird. I thought it was a child, but now that <laughs> I think it's a cat, I might be kind of concerned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we have cats. Our neighbors have cats. Oh. But, yeah, so coffee is a natural stimulant um, that creates some addiction as well. Okay. Caffeine is extracted from coffee and widely used in the pharmaceutical industry. It's bitter, crystal-like substance that's extracted from different plants, but coffee is the most popular one. In large doses, it is toxic. But in normal doses, there are some therapeutic values to it, as you can see from a lot of us. A lot of people use it for life therapy. We're being attacked <laughs> by a cat That's in this place <laughs> There's right now. cats outside <laughs> fighting, we think. But the blinds are drawn, and I don't want to get up because I'm wearing headphones. Yeah, and I don't want to see what I'm... I don't know. It's gonna, it might be like Pet cemetery or something. Mm. Um, oh. There are... Caffeine is addictive in some ways, or actually in a lot of ways, and is already shown to have withdrawal effects when you don't have caffeine from after long periods of having right caffeine. Now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> was there was a time when I had maybe I didn't have coffee for a week, and I wasn't thinking because it, it was just oh when I first stopped working in the office and I didn't have coffee anymore, I kept getting headaches. Oh, and I've had those. Apparently, it's from withdrawal. It's actually awful because yeah. um, the only thing that stopped my coffee headaches was Excedrin, which had caffeine in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so caffeine addiction, it's a real thing. Oh, yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, just drink more of it. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, too, much caf- too, match. too much caffeine mm-hmm. can also produce restlessness, nausea, headache, also some sleep problems, and tensed muscles. Now, the bad side of coffee, let's start with that, and we'll look at the benefits a little bit after, too. Coffee can aggravate the... <laughs> Coffee can aggravate ulcer problems and also cause heartburns. It can affect your sleep. Um, even though coffee only has a few calories per serving, most people, as we mentioned, put creamer. I know somebody put seven and seven. Oh, That's man. Seven cream, seven, seven sugar. sugar. Wow. <laughs> For in it's a disgusting. cup, how big? I don't know. Like a regular cup. Oh, that's it's scary. Gross. It's super that's scary. gross. Um, You're just putting s- a little bit of coffee in your sugar and yeah milk. exactly and for in canada we have the calorie intake in starbucks they show how much calories there are in your drinks if you look at it most of those drinks that have They're sweetened insane. are <laughs> like at this five three seven hundred three to seven hundred range which is ridiculous because it's like big mac that's a level. meal <laughs> yeah um so there's that about coffee um it could also kind of apparently if you enter if you use co- if you drink coffee and take different other drugs as well it can help either make the drug effects worse or better. So it's a little bit of a risk. I don't know. For people who want to try that, let us know. I don't <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> We're not responsible for anything. Uh, no. Um, apparently, if you take it with Prozac, for example, you can get unusual cravings for coffee even after you drink your oh, coffee. Oh, weird. Yeah. You know what's funny? Whenever I take Claritin, because I have allergies, Right. I crave coffee more. Weird. <laughs> I Maybe don't know. you're taking Prozac. <laughs> and you don't even know. 
Wow. <laughs> Did not know you can buy them in a Claritin package. <laughs> it's like that, what was it, Tylenol murder? Or the one who put... Um, oh, I remember this. That? Cyanide? It replaced yeah. some of the capsules with cyanide? Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. It's disturbing. Yeah. Uh, but there are also some benefits to coffee, if you haven't known yet. But there are also some benefits to coffee. Caffeine being one of it also helps you gain energy, gives you that boost, uh, gives you like that dopamine kick of sorts. Um, it's also apparently a good fat burning supplement that helps you with that. So if you want to lose weight, drinking coffee can help. But it also shows the more coffee you drink, the less it helps in increasing your metab metabolic rates as well. So if you're using it for fat loss, weight loss or whatever, it's not going to last You'll Long plateau term, pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, you'll plateau pretty quickly, and you'll actually like plateau down, or not, like drop in your effectiveness for it. Um, it also so stimulates your nervous system, help break down your body fat. Um, also increases your adrenaline levels, which makes your body like a little bit more excited, excited and ready for physical activity. Also has some vitamins like B two, B three, B five, manganese, which I thought was mangoes, mm -hmm. and potassium. For some reason, coffee drinkers also have a significant risk. Decreased risk of type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, and it can also help protect your liver. Also says that... No, that was it. Well, I'm <laughs> sure there are other benefits for it, too. Those are pretty good benefits. Yeah, I think so, too. But yeah, that's just about coffee. I think um, for, for most people, they kind of know. I know it would be cool to have s our friend Srini for oh, a coffee a episode one day because he's a he's not a coffee or he's a coffee snob but yeah he's he very carries a scale with him yeah so <laughs> he measures his coffee every time he drinks it. it's a whole process even on set he'll like bring ev his materials he brings his in. own filters filters cups machinery Machi and stuff yeah, yeah i don't even know what half of the stuff is but, but he makes some damn good coffee so you know i've never had one ever good. every single time yeah. when i catch him making it he's he has to go or oh her, fair enough or he's done he's, he's like he's i'm wrapped <laughs> yeah so you could ask him about that well, well maybe we'll have him in for like a coffee episode or something Please. but the most important question of today's episode was does coffee make you poop it i mean scientifically yeah yeah, yeah. or evidently yes i yeah. have to say uh especially mcdonald's coffee for me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so apparently 30% of humans feel the need to poop after drinking coffee. Which you know. Cool. I don't, actually. Oh, I maybe you're just immune to it at yeah, this point. Yeah, because apparently, so coffee apparently is a diuretic. Yeah. It works, I don't know, sometimes I feel like when I drink coffee, I get constipated. Yes, because it drains the water out of your poop. Right. But then I don't have to poop. I don't feel exactly. like pooping. But I don't like know. Most, apparently it's supposed to make me feel like pooping, but apparently, I don't know. Well, at one point in my life, before I was spoiled by too much coffee consumption, yeah, I was very sensitive to coffee smells. Right. So whenever I went to like, you know, bookstores have Starbucks attached to them. Right. If I go into browse a book <coughs> and I can smell the coffee, I'm like instantly I have to go to the bathroom. What? <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yeah, no, it doesn't work for me. But, but that was when I was really young. Fair enough. Yeah. So apparently, yes, scientifically, poop. Coffee. Coffee does make you feel like pooping. Um, caffeine is a mild diuretic and even has some kind of laxative effect in some people who are particularly sensitive to um, caffeine. Um, it also helps. Yeah, those like, days are long gone. Yeah. <laughs> the same for me, I guess. Um, the chemicals also uh, stimulate muscle contractions in your intestines, which help push, push food. poopy out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, that helps as well. According to William De Paolo, who's a, more a molecular microbiologist for some school in USC, it, uh, some coffee. Some school in USC. Yeah. Some school named USC. Yeah. <laughs> it's like some school named USC. There's about 80 there. to 175 milligrams of caffeine in drip coffee, which in comparison to Coca Cola is about 34. That difference is wha that difference makes can explain why soda doesn't feel like it has a laxative effect while coffee does feel like it has a laxative effect. For the week. Yeah. The acidic nature as well helps, as you mentioned a while ago, um, make you a little more poopy. Yes. <laughs> um, and, of course, the artificial sweeteners and milk and cream also help with making you feel poopy. So you milk and cream... It's a triple milk threat. And milk <laughs> and sugar people <laughs> are just making it your lives harder for yourselves. <laughs> you are drinking a poop bomb. Mm. 
for yourself. I mean, it's important to stay regular. You got to go. Yeah, fair enough. It's not good to keep that stuff inside. Oh, yeah, you got to mm-hmm. go. If you got to go, you got to go. If you really want to go, then drink coffee with mm-hmm. sugar and milk. But I wonder if you have a little bit of a problem going. <laughs> Should you just drink a giant tub of coffee? Yeah, probably. Hmm. But some do a seven and seven. <laughs> seven and seven for your number two. <laughs> a lot of numbers there. Um, so caffeine also helps with your like caffeine also. So another question people ask is because if caffeine is the reason that you have to poop when you drink coffee, will decaf coffee then make you not poop? To that, it's a yes and no because decaf still has some of the acidic factors that coffee has, so it still could kind of make you poop. I don't get people who drink decaf. What is the point? My dad drinks decaf. I think it just because the caffeine kick doesn't really they just like the taste of coffee but they really don't want that caffeine kick okay i know someone who's super sensitive to caffeine so then they can't drink coffee past two oh okay they can't sleep i wonder what that's like i haven't had that caffeine sensitivity in a very long time yeah (laughs) i don't even feel anything when i drink coffee anymore exactly i'm like five cups down like "Mm." i'm always like is it my depression or is it just because i'm used to it (laughs) it's probably both (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the real question isn't that coffee makes us poop it's that is there poop coffee out there Da-da-da. yes yes <laughs> <laughs> um uh, the history of it apparently comes from indonesia they call it the cop the kopi luwak which i think translates to coffee from an asian palm civet they're mm. really cute yeah. if you don't know what they look like you should definitely google them they're like how do you explain them they're raccoony but they're not fat because raccoons are chubby compared to they these. They look leopardy, and yeah. if you've seen an Australian possum, the really cute mm, ones, they yeah. kind of look like that, but spotted and bigger. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, exactly. They kind of look like that. Um, like they got a really cute face. Yeah. Um, in Vietnam, they're called weasel coffee. In the Philippines, they're just called civet coffee, or cafe alamin. The history of this. Um, this civet coffee roots back to, as always, and everything from Asia, from colonialism. Mm. Um, so the legend is Yummy. that the Kopi Luwak was discovered in Indonesia by Dutch colonial rule. Again, we're ignoring the people in Indonesia who discovered coffee, <laughs> but whatever. Um, during that time, apparently, native the native farmers and plantation workers in Indonesia were forbidden from harvesting coffee for their own use and were left to scrounge around for it because the Dutch just wanted all the coffee to themselves. Classic colonials. Uh, but they did soon discover that a civet cat would eat coffee cherries and then poop the seeds out. So for them, they decided to just use those because then technically they didn't harvest that <laughs> seed. It got pooped out. Yes. It was, uh, they removed the cherry bits yeah, for them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I would assume that Dutch colonials would not want to touch poop coffee, so, or poop coffee beans, so then by all means, they just get the Indonesians to do this. But what happened when they brewed these beans is they found that it tasted much better from the conventional coffee at that time, which would be, I think, the 18 or mid 1900, 19th century or something. 18 ish. Yeah. 1800 ish. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So at that time, they found that when you brew the coffee, then it tasted so much better than just regular coffee. And that kind of brought upon the creation of civet coffee. Um, the beans would have been apparently more... Uh, um, in terms of the science behind it, it seems like the co- the civet cat would do all the cleaning processes that we would normally do to the bean. Um, it'll get rid of all the extra bits, the uh, random skins, and get rid of all the useless enzymes, resulting in a very, very clean bean. And you roast it to your liking, and then you get the right coffee for it. Now, there was one, what you could argue now today, though, is that you don't really need the civet coffee, because we can clean Machines. and process. We have yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can clean and process these beans the same way as well now. So, apparently... Not really a big difference between very clean coffee and civet coffee at this point. At first, the civet coffee did really well for the creatures because then Indonesians did see them as a pest back then. But now they became this big commercial thing. Today, though, it has become this big empire of civet coffee. So 
one big issue that came out of this is the abuse and animal cruelty animal yeah. cruelty of civets so there are a lot of farms out there now that just have civets eating and pooping all the time um, a big problem with this is now you don't really get the same quality of civet coffee as it was originally because then you have just being or civets being force fed coffee beans rather mm. than the civets naturally being able to choose and pick the right ripe beans themselves mm -hmm. so you don't actually get a better quality civet coffee in fact apparently today too most of the civet coffee being sold out of indonesia isn't even civet coffee it's just coffee <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot of scamming going on a lot of abuse and a lot of scamming happening right now with civet coffee so humans are bad but yeah we just decide we always just want to abuse the shit out of things it's like guys just we're bad and poor wrong civets. yeah right so this mean. makes me sad <laughs> but also, I have tried the civet coffee. Yeah. Because um, my mom was gifted a little tube of it. It came nice. in a tube. It has a picture of the civet on it. Aw. Cute. <laughs> yeah. And um, I have to say it smells different from coffee beans. It smells like smells shit. Like it is, yes. <laughs> but if that's what their shit smells like, hot damn. <laughs> Majestic shit. <laughs> Feed it to me. <laughs> yeah, I've tried it before, too. It's a, f I mean, it's coffee. I don't know. I, it's got I don't a have different scent. Yeah. Like, I found it to be, it almost smells like it's coffee, but fermented a little bit. Mm. It's got a little fermenty smell. Right. Maybe that's if it held yeah. his poop for a little long. Probably. <laughs> got fermented in the stomach. Mm -mm. Yeah, so um, civets are, like we mentioned, just small little mammals that look like cats. They're nocturnal and tropic. I'm sorry, a native to Asia and Africa. Yeah. Yeah, they have a long tail like a monkey with face markings like a raccoon um, with stripes and spots on its body. They're pretty cute. They're super cute. And I'm sad that we're using them for coffee. Yeah. <laughs> that a machine can do. Right. Um, and even today, again, depends on who you're talking to. I think, my opinion, it's not worth the extra money or the abuse that we give to these civets. Yeah, that made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> I made ourselves sad. Oh man, yeah. We really need a coffee that's not pooped out yeah. <laughs> after this. Um, well, aside from coffee poop, apparently civets are also known to be harvested or used for their musk, so their poops or their farts or their smells. <laughs> maybe it, that's what is the bean smell. Yeah, maybe that's why the bean smell good. <laughs> it's actually a fart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> drank fart water. Mm -mm. Yeah. No uh, regrets though. It was pretty. It was pretty strong. Yeah, right. Like the taste and the smell was yeah. stronger than any coffee bean right. that I bought here. Yeah. It must be because of their musk then, because mm. apparently their musk is located by their butt, and it uh, releases an oily, very odorous sm smell. We have found a use as humans for it, as we do, um, and it's used mainly for perfumes. Mm. It's a big main chem. Butt it's a main scent. chemical for a lot of perfumes. So for those people who like their perfumes, you got some butt juice. Get some butt juice on it. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, never putting perfume on myself ever again. Why well, don't mind it? <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, abuse aside, let's assume that civets aren't being abused, and we do have civet coffee that exists out there. In a perfect world. In a perfect <laughs> world. The big question comes up: Is is it even good? Right. I think back then in the mid 19th century, yes, it was good. It was the purest form they could get for coffee because they didn't have the machinery for it. But it does seem today that it's a whole hoax now. I think a lot of coffees can get the same level of goodness from civet coffees. Then <clears throat> that we don't really have to get co we don't have to get civet coffee to get coffee that good. Now some do argue that it is better still. Like you get a pretty good. Gets keeps all the good stuff, the good acids, and blah 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 blah. Again, of my opinion, from my experience with it, not worth it. Yeah, I don't think it's worth however much that tube costs. Of course, it was a gift, so we don't know. Yeah, but I googled it and it was up to like over a hundred bucks. Yeah, it's a few hundred for bucks for a little bit. Yeah, I'm like I, I'm okay with my hell. My one dollar McDonald coffee tasted <laughs> better than this. <laughs> Maybe because you know I was I tired when coffee, I get my... I get my coffee at Ikea. They have beans. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, Ikea is good coffee, too. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's what we have for civet coffee. Um, We tried a different format of being a little bit more 
I didn't prepare a full essay this time. <laughs> <laughs> We've been busy. Yeah, and Angel went on a trip to Europe, so she's like super fancy now. Oh yeah, let me tell you about cheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think next our next episode would probably be about what is our next blood. Episode? Oh, bl- not cheese, blood. I mean, we can talk about cheese too. Yeah, we're going from poops and butts to blood. blood. <laughs> this is getting grosser <laughs> by the episode. I kind of <laughs> like it. <laughs> But yeah, so that's it. Uh, that's it for our episode of Civet Coffee. Again, Wait, for those who regularly who drink it, stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Think of the poor civets. I know. Don't. They're kept in cages and force-fed, which sounds like an ideal life, but it's not. No, especially <laughs> when you pee on your floor. Mm. Yeah. I but don't just ever want to see photos from these no. farms. Yeah. They would just make me cry. Yeah, that was me last night. Uh, wait, did you Google this? I was just reading up. Someone was like, describing him, and it was really sad. Uh-huh. I skipped most of it because I just didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> I appreciate because, like, I know consciously that it's happening, but yeah, I don't want to know the details. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening. I think wait, the kids wait. outside are ready. Wait, what are we eating? Oh, what are we eating? What are we eating today? Well, I'm on the unemployment diet, <laughs> which a means... boiled chicken? Uh, no, that's a little bit too fancy for me. It's <laughs> hummus all day. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about farts? Yeah, I've got some stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to... Th- th- that's why it's so noisy today, because we had to open the window, because Angel's just farting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just, just so much hummus. Yeah. I buy the value tubs. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't like bread, so I, I just eat them <laughs> with a spoon. There's a picture of you Winnie the Poohing this in your couch as you're like <laughs> crying, like, oh my god, I have no job. <laughs> it's no. not inaccurate. <laughs> this is really good hummus. <laughs> just buy another tub. Next time I'm buying a tub of beet hummus. Ooh, ooh. Is that good? I like it. Okay. Quite like beets. Mm, fair it's enough. It's a little bit sweeter yeah. than hummus hummus. Nice. Wait, what are you eating? What am I eating? I had bibimbap last week because we had some guests over. And I had this idea of making a bibimbap-inspired burger. Ooh. That was it. Yeah. Food truck. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, yeah. But we did. Um, Ian and I went to the Canada Day Parade um, a few days ago or whatever. And we had this food truck that had, like, the Filipino bread. And then we made the Filipino breakfast meals like longaniza into a, a, a burger of sorts mm, that's pretty good nice yeah i recommend that i love food trucks yeah not viable for unemployment no <laughs> just They're just hummus <laughs> <laughs> just hummus and winnie the pooh Mm-mm. <laughs> and then she becomes angel the poop that's we can we can hope <laughs> <laughs> i'll just drink some coffee for that yeah <laughs> anyway. Ooh, in combination with hummus oh my god bad. coffee and hummus it's like that's a lethal <laughs> your farts will like accelerate <laughs> the poop out i will be shot into space yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gasoline and um, uh, other stuff uh, stuff yeah. other stuff my brain i need we're gonna go get coffee now yeah yeah sounds good <laughs> thanks for listening thank you <laughs> bye oh, This is Smorgasbord! Have a food-related ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network. We'd love to hear from our fellow foodie listeners. And while you're there, remember to subscribe or follow us too. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Editing by Mick and logo by Angel. Thanks for listening. For more GHN shows like the Monster Slayer's Guide to Slaying Monsters, come give us a listen at geekhappynetwork.com or look for us on your favorite podcast app. Oh, and be sure to follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Geek Happy Network.